Uh, hey everyone, I'm uh, with Miles Thomas. Uh, he's Head of Marketing and Customer Experience at Singalo. Thanks for joining me on the call today, Miles. Oh, good. Good to be here. Thanks, Tom. No worries. Um, do you want to just tell me a little bit more about um, you know, Singalo and, and your role? Yeah, sure. So uh, I head up marketing and yeah, customer experience for Singalo. So we're a, a coffee roaster um, based in Surrey Hills in Sydney. We've been around since 2003. Um, yeah, real focus on um, specialty coffee, like roasting single origins from all over the world, serving them up to in our cafes. So we've got a uh, cafe in Surrey Hills, we've got a concession stand at Carriage Works um, Markets, and we've also got a, uh, another cafe in the CBD, but, um, and a whole uh, network of um, our partner cafes. So um, yeah, all throughout Australia, serving up our coffee. So my focus is around, um, yeah, engaging with those wholesale partners and, um, you know, growing our brand and, and um, driving, getting great coffee out to um, all the drinkers out there. That's, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So um, obviously COVID-19 uh, affected us all. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about how it's affected you guys and, uh, and what you've done in response? Sure, so um, yeah, I mean, first of all, it was about kind of maintaining the, the sort of health and safety of our staff and, and really focusing on making sure that we could uh, keep roasting coffee, um, keep our sort of uh, customer network in coffee and, and keep kind of um, the roast works running. So our roast works out in Botany, we really sort of locked everything down. So uh, as you can see, I'm working remotely and, and have been for like, uh, yeah, sort of over six weeks now. Um, and so all non-roasting staff were kind of moved out of the roast works and, and we really focused on kind of having just essential staff in there to make sure that we could get all the hygiene practices in place to, to keep um, coffee roasting. Um, Cause if we couldn't do that, then, you know, people, our, our customers wouldn't be happy. Um, and that was the same for our, our cafes as well. Just like putting in all the hygiene practices, like, you know, all, all kind of responsible businesses were doing in terms of um, yeah, trying to make everything as contactless as possible. Um, and then really our next focus was like, how do we support and kind of um, be there for our, our wholesale customers? Um, so, you know, we, we moved pretty quickly. Um, so we uh, recognized that, you know, there was going to be a real challenge for, for our partners. Um, and, you know, whilst we knew the government was, was working, um, we, we wanted to act as well. So within like 48 hours and just before, um, the government actually put out their first stimulus package. We launched a stimulus package of our own, which was a new blend. So stimulus blend. Um, and it was all about, um, yeah, giving people a, a kind of caffeine uh, hit and a boost in pro productivity. Um, so yeah, really premium brand of Costa Rican and Kenyan coffee. Um, and we actually offered it a really great value proposition. So we made it a three for two offer just to give some, a way to help our customers who might be starting to fill the pinch, um, not only have something kind of a bit of a, a reverent take on the situation, but something that they could um, just help their bottom line as well in terms of um, keeping their customers in coffee. Um, so yeah, you know, we just worked out that it was pretty amazing that we could, you know, something that would normally take three months for us to develop, um, we actually turned around in yeah 48 hours. So it was quite, cool to see what can be done when um yeah the the pressure is really on um and yeah wendy our, our kind of head of coffee head of green bean buying and, and coffee kind of really moved quickly to to develop this um flavor profile and blend that um was really gonna kind of stand out um then we kind of worked remotely with our marketing team to get it out there um, and yeah, just, just wanted to have a bit of fun and, and kind of bring something light to what was, yeah, obviously a really, you know, challenging situation. Um, but yeah, I suppose, you know, we didn't want to stop there with, with just kind of a, a new coffee and really like looking at ways that we could continue to support our cafes. So, um, one of the other things we did was, um, to launch a cafe kickback. Um, so that's essentially a program to help our customers tap into our online sales. Um, so obviously the majority of um, our cafe partners are just focusing on you know, doing what they do best, which is serve great coffee and 
um, uh, yeah, keep their customers happy, like a lot of them pivot, pivoting to a takeaway model. Um, but, uh, and some of them, unfortunately, having to close down um, just because they didn't, you know, they didn't have the, the volume to keep their businesses alive. And before the, um, the, the JobKeeper program had really kicked in, they were having to shut their doors. Um, so Cafe Kickback is the way that, yeah, every, if they drive um, their customer, communicate to their customers that they can get coffee online with us. Um, their customers got a 10% discount and um, they actually earned up to 30% in coffee credits um, so that when they did open their doors again, they, they would have a few extra kilos so that they could, um, yeah, that kind of road back to reopening was a little smoother. And that's been, yeah, amazingly received. We had likes of Three Blue Ducks and uh, Told You So up in Queensland and um, who else? Uh, the Boathouse Group really getting behind that, promoting kickback to their community uh, and just really appreciating um, that, you know, if we were doing something quickly uh, and really focused on their needs um, as opposed to just, you know, what was going on in our world. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So essentially, they were a, you obviously had a an, an active and and a, uh, and a and a and a functioning sort of direct to consumer kind of e-commerce channel, and that they could leverage that with their customers. And yeah, that's a win-win for everyone, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's right. Yeah, we yeah obviously sell coffee online um, direct to consumers, but um, yeah, it's something that we wanted to open up and and you know recognize that not all our customers had that um, ready and waiting to go, and it was something that we could bring and, and kind of give value to them, and obviously help us too by by kind of ensuring that we're keeping roasting and um, and kind of yeah open up to new audiences from our online channel. That's a fantastic way just to you know to leverage what you've got and, and to um, and to incorporate your, your customers as well. Uh, now I've been hearing stories about some um, amazing uh, ready-made meals that have been yeah. by your share. Can something a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So our um, we kept our Surrey Hills Cafe open, but really sort of quickly pivoted um, once uh, we had to close, and so it was only uh, takeaway. Um, so we had a single old corner store where we were selling just like everyday staples that um, we knew uh, our customers loved from uh, being on the menu in our cafe. So Myrna crumpets, like Pepe say butter, Urkelo bread, and actually flour for people who wanted to um, give, have a crack at making sourdough at home. Um, but then we also worked with our, our head chef, Ben, um, who uh, just really thought about a way to kind of take our menu and all the dishes that um, our customers love and kind of package them up in a format that people could enjoy at home. So created our single O ready-made meals or ready meals um, where it's a sort of sous vide meals. Um, so like vac packed uh, and you can just take them, take them home, like drop them in hot water, heat them up and have yeah, a delicious meal at home without having to, kind of, um, yeah, worry too much about buying multiple ingredients or complicated recipes. Um, and yeah, they've been a real hit. So um, you're just able to kind of have a format where it still draws on our, our recipes, which are all about like amazing locally sourced native ingredients and just make them really easy for people to access. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's great. They sound like uh, they sound like like some pretty pretty swanky ready meals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, uh, yeah, yeah, with lots of lots of local ingredients. So that that that's amazing. Um, yeah, uh, you mentioned as well, sort of uh, doing a few other initiatives. Um, you know, sort of uh, whether they're on online or or with uh, other new products. Do you want to sort of tell me a bit more about that? Yeah. So um, one of the things we've been doing is just focusing on how we can. Um, get our coffee out to, to people and, and kind of help grow our audience uh, where, you know, they might not have the best equipment or the best knowledge at home. Um, so we've got a pretty exciting new product, which we had been looking at positioning more for the travel or sort of outdoor segment, which was uh, single O parachutes. They're essentially uh, filtered drip coffee bags. Um, so like pre-packaged bags uh, with ground uh, coffee in that's been nitrogen flush so it stays super fresh and then you just have this really easy experience where you whack it open and kind of pour over hot water and you have a really delicious fresh single origin coffee uh, at home so that's really a really nice way to kind of uh, bring new audiences into a, into the brand and get them enjoying um, the coffee at home where they might normally be used to going out and, and getting a barista to make it for them um, 
so yeah, we've been focusing on how we get that out to, to the new audiences again through partnerships has been a big focus there. So, you know, I mentioned Pepe Sea earlier, they did um, some Easter bundles with um, their Myrna crumpets and their butter and single O parachutes. Um, and we've seen a number of kind of um, looking at uh, different partners keen to kind of bundle up our coffee and, and kind of go out to, to new audiences. And this product's been a really great way of doing that. Just let me get straight. So the 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 this parachute, um, single air parachutes, were they was it already in production? And have you just sort of like have you just really sort of just driven driven them and made that much faster because obviously there's there's a need for people to have great coffee at home. So is that something you've just kind of made a lot quicker? Um, or is yeah. That so so we've been we've tested it a few times um, and just been uh, looking at ramping you know ramping it up. But with the yeah. The, Kind of everything changing around uh, COVID, we we really doubled down on it, um, increased the order, um, and and looked at ways that we could get it out to new audiences. Um, and yeah, kind of changed the proposition around the product a little bit in terms of um, as opposed to being you know the perfect accompaniment when you're traveling. It was really much more about you know that super easy um, experience at home, um, and just something where yeah people can be a bit like daunted by making coffee at home, you know, but we really want to be uh, an accessible specialty brand. Um, so not only have we kind of had that, you know, great product, we focused on how we can take our um, team of trainers who normally uh, focus on training up our, our wholesale partners um, and uh, get, the, get them out to our at-home audiences. So our head tape head trainer Toby has been doing Instagram live videos kind of with really great brew tips and brew methods um, and kind of explaining, you know, the, some of the, the principles around how to make coffee at home so that, yeah, you don't need to um, be a master barista to enjoy a good brew. You know, um, people who have the, the French pests or the plunger at the back of the cupboard um, and you can actually have a really great, um, experience with specialty single origin coffees and, and kind of just having a few key pointers to, to help you get the most out of it it's not it's not that hard but um uh it's been really great to see him like engaging directly with with the direct customer online through yeah platforms like instagram so yeah that's that's super interesting you, you, you mentioned a couple of trends which you know obviously have, um were maybe already starting but have certainly sort of really really ramped up due to due to covid um one being sort of the, the sort of you know making um your home sort of your nest and, and having mm. things like delicious coffee you know readily available another one obviously kind of having this unique kind of interaction with with brands and, and with companies online in, in a more authentic and um sort of personal way um now are you do you, are you, do you think these trends will continue and are these trends that you're going to continue to back kind of moving forward? Yeah. I mean, as a brand, we've always like looked to partner with other like life-minded brands who really you know care about quality and craft and, and far rather do that um, than kind of go out with, you know, more traditional advertising. And I think, yeah, we're only going to see that continue um, to really form partnerships and reach new audiences and, and look at like, you know, just different ways that we can kind of bring our product to customers and, and kind of continue to, to open up our audience. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been really great to kind of see everyone um, be so open to collaborating. Um, and I think, yeah, you, for sure you're only going to see that continue um, yeah, into the future or just be the sort of the new normal in terms of people realizing that, um, yeah, if you can find like-minded brands and you can do something different with them, then um, then it's kind of win-win. Um, and that's yeah, always been a mentality that we've had. Um, you know, seeing you know, how quickly um, you know, partners have, have been keen to, to launch these new bundles or, or kind of deliver a home um, dining experiences. It's been really inspirational and we've, we've been looking to kind of share some of those stories um, with our um, broader uh, community and through our social channels um, it's been yeah really nice to be able to kind of put things out there that we've done like corner store or, or ready meals um, but then also see from all across our partner network the amazing um, different initiatives that have been put out so we've been kind of making a real concerted effort to highlight and feature them on our social channels and and yeah it's kind of seeing that snowballing effect of people Kind of realizing you know what they can do if they just move quickly and are kind of open to partnering or open to trying new things 
um, yeah, it's been really inspiring. That's yeah, that's incredible. And when we sort of are sort of seeing these these trends that are, you know across the board that that the timings have been shortened and and things are happening faster. I guess out of necessity, but can you put your finger on why it's been possible? I mean, you mentioned obviously that you managed to get a new coffee out in 48 hours. You mentioned that you've tw twisted and changed business models. You mentioned that you've partnered with these new people and, and created an online store for them. I mean, how have you managed to turn these things around so quickly? And um, yeah, and is there any sort of learnings or lessons that you'll take with you forward um, that's going to help Single O in the future? Yeah, I think just, you know, it's been that that speed and that, um, you know, the necessity has just driven that innovation. We've always want to look to innovate, um, but, you know, things tend to to have a much uh, longer time frame. And, but when, yeah, your whole, you've got to change your whole business model to survive, um, that uh, kind of necessity has driven that and just the realisation that, um, you know, it's far better to get something out there, uh, learn quickly and get that feedback on, on whether it's hit the mark or whether your um, tone is right or the kind of context is relevant um, and just kind of just not be afraid to kind of put things out in the world uh, and see how they go. And I think that kind of increased cadence and speed of iteration is something that, you know, we've, we've just seen how valuable it can be. Um, you know, the, the kind of temptation is always to yeah wait and get things perfect and and kind of really have a bit of um you know fear about is this going to land right whereas you recognize that you know when times are kind of desperate like this it's just about you know having the right intent and showing your your partners that you're there to support and then um, having a good crack at putting something out there and not taking yourself too seriously with it either um, it's definitely something that we've we've tried to hold, always try to hold true but yeah it's just been shown how um, how much more you can get done when you, yeah, you, things are really on the line and you've got to just, just get something out there. I think that's a really interesting learning and lesson across the board is that um, I think within, through this period, consumers and customers and, and partners, there's been a bit more sort of wiggle room and understanding that, mm. that as long as the, the sentiment's right and as long as they're trying to do good things, there's, there's almost a little bit of understanding. Look, it might not be perfect, exactly perfect, but we're going to go with it. And I think that, um, kind of gusto has been sort of really sort of welcome um, mm -hmm. across a number of industries and, and has, and has uh, helped people adapt faster and, uh, and come up with innovative and creative ideas to, to, yeah. to, to move their business models, which is, which is awesome. I mean, and just chatting to you, look, you seem super excited and, and upbeat. I don't want to sort of, you know, um, you know, put words in your mouth, but are you, are you excited for the, for the future? And what do you foresee sort of happening um, with with cafes um, as we sort of potentially look toward a, a sort of soft opening or, or re a relaxation. Yeah. Doors. Yeah. Look. Um, yeah. We're you know we're really upbeat. I think we we um, moved quickly and and kind of sort of uh, expected the worst. And and you know I think by doing that and I think you know we haven't seen the the most dire um, situations that that some predicted and I think that's been really encouraging and it's great to see that yeah there's there's now looking like we're going to gradually start to open up and I think um, you know that sort of real um, sort of can-do attitude and like fast iteration spirit that we've seen from our customer base and we've tried to do ourselves is is going to continue as like you know it's going to be this whole new phase of things aren't going to just flip back to the way that they were. Um, it's going to need to be this kind of um, this second pivot again now to get back into the to kind of the new world. And I think, yeah, you're going to you're going to continue to see um, our customers, cafes and restaurants have sort of dual models where they might they might start to open up a limited amount of dining if if they're allowed to in a kind of really hygienic way. But they're going to need um, to continue to offer these other streams of, of revenue, such as you know, growing their online audience or delivering re ready meals to home, or kind of looking at new innovative um, like contactless service models, um, something we're kind of exploring. You know, what is that new um, coffee model for 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 the the new world order uh, in terms of post COVID or, or as we transition out of this phase. Um, so yeah, it's super exciting as a marketer. It's like this is this is what kind of gets you up in the morning when you know everything's moving quickly. There's great opportunity out there to sort of show and support your customer base, and and people are really receptive to you trying new things. Um, and yeah, 
you know, it's definitely, it's definitely not boring. Yeah, sure. It's definitely not dull, no. Um, so, do you, so from your side, I guess you've got so many different strands which lend themselves to adaptation or change. So I guess you've got this kind of e-commerce model. You've mm-hmm. got these, um, you know, ramping up for this kind of dual cafe model, perhaps, where you might have some of the store open in a more classic way and then potentially maintain this kind of corner store and, and takeaway model as well. Any other sort of insights or learnings or things you can give away that you might be doing in the future um, that, you, that will, yeah, in this sort of new future where sort of some restrictions may, may still apply? Yeah, so I mean, we've, um, so we launched just over a year. It's been actually almost exactly a year since we launched our, um, batch taps at Surrey Hills. So it's all about um, filter coffee, single origin filter coffee on tap, um, really giving people a, a range of um, coffees that they can experience and making it super easy to go up and, and kind of um, put your, your own cup there. And in 15 seconds, you can get your coffee um, or you can kind of try from a range of different regions or processes and and start to learn and understand, you know, about some of the the differences in coffee. Um, and I think, you know, uh, th- there's for us, there's kind of opportunity there. I think people's kind of appreciation of provenance um, and source and where things come from is only going to be amplified um, in the future as we, you know, we've been through this kind of phase of, of getting a lot more um, recognition about where our produce is coming from and shopping local. Um, so we see that, that that opportunity to kind of showcase great single origins and direct to, to producer relationships um, will only continue. Um, and we're looking at ways that we can take that prototype that we had at Surrey Hills or still have, um, and we can bring it out to, to kind of a, a bigger audience. So, um, yeah, the idea of kind of a completely contactless experience with coffee where you can go and you can chat to um, your cafe staff or barista are about where the coffee's come from, but you can maintain your social distance. You can take your own keep cup and you can, um, yeah, sample a delicious single origin coffee. Um, that's really exciting, worked really well for us at Surrey Hills. Um, so we'll be looking at how we can kind of, yeah, potentially extend that to, to new opportunities as well. That's super exciting, and it sounds like it's the uh, the, the exact model that, that that we need sort of going forward. Um, and you know, as Aussies, you know, lo- loving coffee, there's, the, the, there's there's no sort of sweeter sound than than uh, the idea to go and, go and try a few, and then uh, and then you know, engage a barista to to find out, and and no one's actually touched uh, your cup. So that's that's amazing news. Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. I think yeah, that's uh, you could just sort of round this up. But I just thought you know, look, you've 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 obviously done rapid change across so so many different sort of channels um and you've done it all working remotely i mean if is there any sort of sort of singular thing or um sort of motto or mantra that you know that's, that's kind of kept you guys together and and keep, keep kept you sort of strong driving sort of through this this last sort of period of change over the last couple of months yeah i mean we've just tried to really keep connected as a team and as a as a business um, in terms of our internal staff and um, yeah, we've always had a really strong staff culture and um, enjoyed kind of getting together. So we've tried to maintain that um, and, and kind of being really mindful that this is, you know, this is a really challenging situation for, for many people, you know, working remotely um, can have, yeah, it has, its, has some of its advantages sometimes in terms of being out of focus, uh, if, if you're lucky enough to, to have a sort of space where it's conducive to work, but it's not the same for everyone with distractions with kids and kind of partners and things working in the same environment. So we've just tried to really stay connected um, and kind of open with our staff members, um, having you know, regular weekly Zoom meetings um, where everyone's involved, like keeping using Slack and keeping it really open as a communication channel. And just making sure we're having check-ins to, to you know, make sure that um, in all this sort of craziness and fast paced uh, movement and launching of, of new work that we're not forgetting that, um, yeah, we're all kind of people and we're all facing our own challenges and we need to, um, yeah, feel supported as a team and, and work together. Otherwise, um, yeah, you know, if we're not enjoying doing it, then, then yeah, there's not much point. So, um, yeah, it's just been really great to, um, yeah, use all the tools out there and see that, you know, if you're, you're getting a whole 
you know, 60 employees into a Zoom call to get an update, um, it can be really beneficial and we can also still yeah, have a bit of fun. We had, had beers on Zoom the other week to toast to a, a team member who was moving on, but um, yeah, it was great to kind of keep that connection alive and, and make sure that we're all um, yeah, talking to each other and, and keeping those relationships going. Yeah, that's that's right, and I think it's you know what you've achieved is, is testament to, um, <clears throat> to obviously to the, to the team that you built and um, and to the technologies and, and processes and, and practices that you put into place, uh, obviously leading, leading up to this. So yeah, so Miles, thank you so much for jumping the call. I'm delighted no things nice. have been so uh, so positive, and and you guys are doing some some super interesting and, and innovative things. Um, and yeah, I look forward to uh, you know grabbing a single coffee in the coffee. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much. Great Cheers. to chat. Cool. See you soon. Bye.